Hey, what's up, Kim Peeps? Who's ready for some collision theory practice? Consider the reaction between nitrogen monoxide and ozone to form NO2 and oxygen. Only those collisions in which the N atom of NO collides with one of the terminal O atoms of ozone are likely to produce NO2 and O2, even if the molecules collide with an energy that's greater than the activation energy. Which of the answer choices best represents an effective collision of NO and ozone? First, let's identify which of the reactant molecules represents NO and which represents ozone. NO is gonna be represented by the molecule on the left and ozone by the molecule on the right. I can determine that because ozone is made up of, of three oxygen atoms or three of the same type of atom. So they have the same coloration in my answer choices. Because NO consists of two distinct atoms, the atoms that make up a molecule NO are gonna have two different colorations. But the atom of O in NO will have the same coloration of the atoms that make up ozone, because they're all oxygen. Next, we're told that only those collisions in which the nitrogen atom of NO collides with one of the terminal O atoms of ozone. So let's take a look at option A. Here it shows a molecule of NO colliding with the central atom of ozone. A collision occurs. This is an example of an ineffective collision. Boom, wrong answer. Let's look at answer B. Here, the nitrogen side of the NO molecule is striking the central oxygen atom in ozone. Now we want the nitrogen side of NO to strike ozone, but it needs to strike the terminal atom. Incorrect, not an effective collision. Answer C, nitrogen of NO collides with terminal atom of ozone, collision occurs, we form NO2 and oxygen. This one's looking golden. But let's double check the last answer. Here, the oxygen end of NO collides with terminal oxygen in ozone, unlikely to result in an effective collision. Based on the description given, we're looking for nitrogen colliding with a terminal atom of oxygen in the ozone molecule to create our effective collision. Done. Now, College Board is in love with particle representations. So you definitely wanna be comfortable looking at and thinking about collision theory at the molecular level. Next question. The reaction between hydrogen gas and fluorine gas needs energy in order to proceed. To form the product, the bond between H and H in H2 must break. The bond between F and F in F2 must also break. A new bond between H and F must also form to make HF. The reactant bonds break at the same time the product bonds form. We can show this as boom. This structure represents our activated complex. Notice that it shows the breaking of the HH and FF bonds and the formation of the HF bonds. Our activated complex is most likely gonna be found at the peak of our energy profile in location C. It's at that point that our reactant molecules have enough energy to begin to break reactant bonds and form product bonds. And we are done.